Welcome to Informatica video support. My name is Sita Kantpradhan. I work as a product specialist in global customer support division of Informatica. In today's video, I will be talking about streamer and the components of streamer in B2B data transformation. Here is the agenda of today's video. In first, I will be talking about what is a streamer, use case of streamer, how to develop a streamer, components of streamer, followed by a demo. What is a streamer? A streamer is a data transformation component that splits a huge input file into smaller part and send the small part of the input file to the next transformation which does the real processing of the input. So in short, a streamer doesn't process the data but just split the data to smaller part and send the smaller input file to the next transformation. Use case of streamer. DT projects like parser, mapper or serializer read the complete input file enrolled into the memory. If the input is very huge and you have very limited resource, you have very limited memory in your machine, then DT would fail with out of virtual memory. So in that case, you can use a streamer which will not load the complete input file to your memory but will read only part of input file and load into the memory which further can be processed by the parser, mapper or serializer. The other use case is if the size of the input file is keep on growing over the period of time and you don't want to wait till the full file is downloaded or received and want to process as soon as it arrives, you can use a streamer. How does it work? A streamer is always invoked using any of the API that is provided by the DT or Power Center. DT provides API in C, C++, Java, .NET, Web Methods so you can use any of the API to invoke the streamer project. When you invoke a streamer project using any of the API, you have the option to set the chunk size of the data. So when you mention the chunk size in the API, instead of reading the complete input file, the API will read the chunk size amount of data from the input file and load into the memory which can be further read by the streamer project. So we are not loading the complete input file but only the chunk size. So you can read any any amount of size of the data. So once DT streamer gets the chunk size amount of data it has it puts its own logic. You can you can put your own logic based on what you can send the input to the next transformation. Now how to develop a streamer? As a streamer is useful only for huge input file, you should, you should think before developing a streamer whether you are expecting a very big input file. Otherwise you don't need to create a streamer for a small input file it will it will have an extra overhead or performance impact because you are doing unnecessary splitting for a small input file where however a parser can do the same job so first criteria before developing a streamer is to the input file should be very huge and before developing a streamer you should have to develop the parser, mapper or serializer which is which can process the small transaction. Now you can put your own logic in the streamer to file the valid transaction that the parser or mapper serializer can process. Okay? Now you can send the same kind of transaction multiple times and invoke the parser, mapper or serializer that can process the data. So here is the step-by-step -step process. First, you need to 
put your own logic in the streamer that will find a valid transaction which can be processed by the parser, mapper or serializer and invoke the corresponding parser, mapper, serializer to, pro to parse the data. Components of streamer. For that, I will take you through the demo where I will be telling you uh, how to develop a streamer and the components of a streamer. So here is the B2B data, data transformation studio where I have already developed a parser named my first parser and I'm building a file1.txt input file where you can see the data is like this in the example pen and I have a few contents to parse them. Now I will be developing a streamer which can invoke the parser that I have already developed. So here you go. So this is the name of the streamer. Under, under the streamer you can see it contains a complex segment. Complex segment is something which contains a header, a repeating segment, a footer. A repeating segment can contain multiple, multiple uh, invocation of the simple segment or where you are expecting the data would be repeated like a normal document can have a header a footer segment but there will be some segment which will be repeated so you can use the repeating segment which is called as a body part of the input file now under sim repeating segment you have opening marker and closing marker this is equivalent to marker in the parser. So in opening marker you can tell that from where you want to start marking the data and closing the marker is something from where you want to close the data. So the data in between opening marker and closing marker is a valid transaction and you can use the run component to send that, that much data to this particular run component. Okay. So in opening marker you have a search where you will be seeing these options new line search, offset search, pattern search and text search. Okay. Similarly you have a closing marker which has the same same search like new line, offset, pattern and text search. First you need to understand your input before creating an streamer. In this program, I consider this is a valid segment, this is a valid transaction and each, each transaction is separated by a new line. Okay? So, and my parser expects each line as a valid transaction. So, here the separator is a new line search. So, I can put a new line search here with no opening marker because I want to send only new line search as the separator between two records. So I don't have any opening marker, I just have a closing marker. Now I will save it and I, I will make the streamer as a startup component and I will make a run component as the parser that I have already created. Now if I invoke the streamer it will be asking me what is the input file for this so now if I run it I will be seeing this much data I can see two record data here but if you see here it is not valid because it doesn't contain a root tag so in streamer I have a option where I can mention a root tag Now, now if I run it, the output is very much valid because it contains a root tag with name root.
so we have these are the properties of the streamer the first one is disable where you can disable a streamer now you can give a name to the streamer so in the event log you will be able to see the name of the streamer and for that to help to debug the if any problem similarly if you want to provide any remark you can provide the remark here if you want to add the header segment to each body then you can enable this concat header to repeating segment which will help to add the header segment to each body part similarly we have footer segment which is parsed only after the complete body is processed so this is the last one as dt is single threaded once the repeating segment part is completely processed then only the footer segment would be processed so this is processed at the end of the streamer max lookup size determines the scope of a streamer to search for a valid segment let's say you have set your streamer chunk size as 100 mb whereas whereas your a valid transaction itself contents is a 200 mb in so in that case in that case the dt streamer would wait for the next transaction next chunk to arrive so that it can search for a valid transaction but if your max lookup size is less than the size of a valid segment it would fail because the scope is the max lookup size so you need to first understand the size of the valid transaction and accordingly you can set the max lookup size on end of input if you want to invoke a parser mapper or serializer or do anything at the end of the execution you can set the on end of input there is another important thing in streamer which is streamer variable you cannot use a normal variable inside a streamer you have to use a streamer variable to store any value let's say in header segment you can you can invoke any parser or serializer or mapper okay and you similarly similar to the repeating segment you can invoke any parser but if you want to store the value store the process value to any variable you cannot use a normal variable you have to use a streamer variable because you the processed input file you might be want to use in the body part but as the normal variable the scope of the normal variable is to the particular parser or particular mapper this will not be available to the repeating segment so if you use a streamer variable this the scope of the variable will be throw out the streamer project so a a process value that is stored in the variable of the header can be used in the body part now moving to the slides so we have covered what is complex segment a complex segment is nothing but a segment which can contain the header the repeating portion and the footer similarly we have header segment and repeating segment and footer segment root tag is used to wrap the input file so that it can be the output can be a valid segment max lookup size is used to search for a new segment and the scope the scope of a new search for the new segment streamer variable is used to store the variable in the streamer i hope the video is helpful to you we would love to hear from you in support videos at the rate informatica.com and you can tweet us also in twitter.com at the rate infosupport